Oscar the balloonist discovers the sea. Have you chosen a swimming belt? If so, click on it. Then you can go on playing where you left off last. If not, choose a swimming belt now. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Little Bumble Bear's Let's Play. I'm Kristen and we are back with another game by Tavola. This is Oscar the Balloonist, and this time, instead of discovering Africa, we're going to be discovering the sea. I hope you enjoy. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below sharing your thoughts. Do you remember Oscar the Balloonist? And of course, subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. Check out the playlist in the description box to see all the other games by Tavola. I have a Twitter and Instagram you can follow, and a wonderful Discord server with such kind people. It's a great place to hang out. Use the invite link in the description box and come say hi. But without further ado, let's get started. Enjoy. From now on, this is your swimming belt. The next time you play, click on it, then you can go on playing from where you left off today. Yoohoo! I can see the sea. Carmela, we're almost there. Can you see Balthasar yet? No, but he's bound to be here somewhere. He'd better, or Balthasar of Poop and Nickel's brilliant animal research will turn out to be a damp squib. Oh, Balthasar's a brilliant scientist and inventor. No question. He's just afraid of animals, that's all. Well, Oscar. He's a nice old scaredy cat. I just hope we find him. Ooh, I think I've spotted him. Prepare for landing. This sandcastle can only be Baltasar's work. Come on, Oscar, let's go inside. I knew it. This is your castle, Baltasar. Oscar. Welcome to my seaside citadel. And there's Carmen at the old game's chest. Come in, both of you do. What can I say? My work has hit something of a snag. There must be animals out there. But, uh, well, uh... You can't pluck up the courage to go outside. Um, yes, exactly. Don't worry, I'll help you. I'll go and see the animals and then tell you all about them. There are some games hidden where the animals live. Will you bring them with you? Of course, if I can find them. With my season balloon, I can visit the animals in spring in summer, in autumn, and in winter. Wonderful! Then we're agreed. But first, let me show you round the castle. We are perfectly safe in here. The water in the moat is really salty. I've created a few experiments with water. Choose one. You can make your own seawater and then filter the salt out again if you want. First, you need to add a teaspoon of salt to a glass of water and stir well. The salt dissolves. Pour the salt water onto a flat plate and leave it to stand. In time, the water will evaporate and the salt will be left on the plate. And you can get salt out of seawater in exactly the same way. Want to try another experiment? Salt water and fresh water mix all by themselves. That works like this. Fill a big glass with water, but leave three fingers space below the rim. Now, fill a plastic cup with water. 
Stir two or three teaspoons of salt into this water until the salt has dissolved. Now, make a small hole in the bottom of a second plastic cup, like a yogurt pot or similar. Turn the cup over with your finger over the hole. Now, pour the salt water into the second cup. Now, suspend the cup with the hole in the big glass and secure it. Don't remove your finger until it's underwater. The first thing you see is that the water levels in the glass and the cup balance themselves out. <laughs> but that's nothing special. The astonishing thing is that suddenly water flows out of the glass into the cup. The toing and froing of salt and fresh water continues until the water in both vessels contains the same amount of salt. The reason for this is that liquids always try and find a balance. They will blend with each other until the mixture is even. Cool, huh? You can go on experimenting if you like. Now, I'll show you that water has skin. For this, you'll need a glass full to the brim with water, just so it won't overflow. Now, slip some coins into the water, one by one, carefully, so that the water doesn't slop over. If you look from the side, you'll see that at some point, the water level will be above the top of the glass. The cardboard must lie firmly on the water. Then the water will hold it so firmly that it can't fall down, even with counterweights. The surface of water has a tension all of its own. Very light things can float on it. And that's why drips form on taps that only drop when they've reached a certain weight. Soap and detergent destroy surface tension when they're mixed with water. My newest invention is the turbo boat. It's outside on the beach. I'm sure it'll be a dream to drive. And it can dive too. This diver swimmer is my latest invention. Now you'll be able to make contact with all the creatures on and under the water. Great. How does it work? You climb into the boat like a swimming belt. The dome can be shut tight. Use the pedals to move forwards and the rudders for steering in the desired direction. To dive, press this button here. Here are the switches for light and air and communicate by means of the speaking tube. Great, I can use it for my research. This is my animal information board. Here I've described and drawn the animals to the best of my knowledge. And you've got to find out if I'm right, Oscar. When you go outside and visit an animal, the board may change. The herring gull. Gulls are predatory fish that eat other sea creatures. They have terribly sharp teeth. Beware of seagulls, Oscar. Oh dear. The spiny dogfish is small and has many enemies. They can change color so that their enemies can't see them. This is good camouflage. 
usually to be found in shallow water. OK, let me just check that. A shrimp. Looks sweet, but is very large. Shrimps have their babies on sandbanks. The little ones drink their mother's milk and wail loudly if they're left alone. Right, I'll try and find a shrimp. I wonder if that was all correct. Seals live in schools at the bottom of the sea. They have gills which filter the oxygen out of the water so they can breathe. Seals are extremely tasty and healthy to eat. Really? Well, I'm going to see if you're right. This bird is called an Aurelia jellyfish. It lives on the coast. Aurelia lays eggs, which the male and female Aurelia then hatch. Jellyfish are always hungry. When there's nothing else available, jellyfish will even eat rubbish. Yum, yum. I'm going to find me a jellyfish and ask it some questions. Cod, place, and coli. These are huge mammals that live in the sea. They come to the surface to breathe. They make mountain-high fountains when they blow water out of their nostrils, which can be seen for miles. Unbelievable. I think I'd better investigate. I believe the whale to be a very strange animal. Its body consists almost completely of water. You must never touch a whale, Oscar. It has tentacles all over it, filled with poison, which can really sting your skin. Mmm. I think I'd better take a closer look at a whale. Do you want to play with me? Yes? No? Cool. As you can see, I am full of games. But before you can play one, you have to find it somewhere around one of the animals. Keep your eyes peeled, because there's a game hidden near each one. Here, you can go back to the last scene. If you click on the question mark, I'll explain everything again. Now you can get going. Have lots of fun! Do you want to play a game from my chest? Then click here. I'm going to have a look round outside. Do be careful, won't you? <sighs> a gentle breeze. Plants are sprouting in the dunes. Spring by the sea is lovely. Who are we? We hatch from eggs, but we're not birds. We don't have hair, but we're not bald either. Hello there. I'm Paula. Paula Place. My name's Kevin, and I'm a cod. And I'm Colin the Coley. We aren't related, but we do have a few things in common. We share a sort of commune which has its advantages. We have lots of little scales on our skin. Scales are protective discs of bone. Lots of fish can change the colour of their scales to adapt to their surroundings. 
that makes them hard to find for their enemies. An incredible number of different fish live in the sea. Big, small, fat, thin, flat, round, almost every shape imaginable. Unfortunately, we don't all get on. There are lots of food feuds. Like all fish, we breathe through gills. That works like this. The water streams into the gills. The oxygen is filtered out by things called lamellas. And the rest of the water flows out again. People use nets like these to try and catch us. We have very popular items on the menu. Breaded coli and cod steaks. Who thinks these things up? <laughs> so mean. Then it's eyes open and scarper. I mean, who wants to end up on a plate? We live quite near the coast. Down on the ground floor, if you will. Paula Place is a bit odd. She likes to bury herself in the sand and spends her whole life near the coast. Kevin Cord and I only stay here till we're grown up. And then we head off into the big blue sea. Gentle breeze, plants are sprouting in the dunes. Spring by the sea is lovely. Who am I? As transparent as glass, but as wobbly as custard. Bumping into me might be painful. It's me, Joanna Jellyfish. I dance on the currents in the sea. They take me here, they take me there, they take me almost anywhere. This bu Hmm. Spring. Let's see what the fish are up to. I don't get it. Why are Colin the Coley and Kevin Cod so restless? Why aren't you swimming with them? Oh, I'm more the stay-at-home type. I don't get out much. But it's so nice here. Why swim somewhere else? There's nothing happening outside. See, what did I tell you? Female cod carry five million eggs around with them. Soon it'll be time for her to spawn. Sporin? Kevin? That sounds Scottish. No, it's nothing to do with kilts, Oscar. To spawn just means to lay eggs. Fish eggs are known as roe. And just to make it completely confusing, the male sperm are known as soft row. Poor. You haven't seen any fish around, have you? We are so hungry. Uh, no. There's, uh, no one about, um, apart from me. Thank you, Oscar. The dogfish would have gobbled us up. Time flies. It's already summer. Ah! 
Are you looking for something, Kevin? Yes, I'm hungry. I'm looking for shrimps. My favourite food is the little animals that live on the seabed. Salam! That was a mate of mine. You can come out again now. Better concealed than revealed. You scared the wits out of me. You can bury yourself really well. Great. What's that funny hook thing? That's a pipe fish. They're related to seahorses. With them, it's the males that get pregnant. They have a stomach pouch where the females lay their eggs. When the young pipefish are grown, the brood pouch opens up and they come out one after the other. Phenomenal! What sort of strange creature is that? A sea cucumber. Oh, are there sea tomatoes too? Then you could make a sea salad. Sea cucumbers are animals, not vegetables. I must get my stiff old bones moving. Why are Colin's bones stiff, Paula? They're not really stiff, Oscar. That's just an expression. But we are known as bony fish with a hard skeleton. Lots of bones are connected to the backbone. We even have some in our fins. I see. Apropos bones, congratulations, you've found our game. Whoops, our friend has fallen apart. As you can see, this is a bony fish. It's got a backbone, a rib cage, and fine bones right down to its fins. Can you put it back together again? Drag and drop the parts to the desired position. Now we can get started. First, you have to choose whether the game should be easier or harder. Good luck. Very good. The skeleton's complete. Now you just have to put the scales together. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Great. There it goes. How time flies. It's already summer. 
Use the balloon to choose the season. That's odd. Where do all the fish go in autumn? I was right. We've got a visitor. Help! A monkfish! Place are its favourite food. <laughs> Not what you call good looking, really. <laughs> Goodness, it's gone. Rabsies, shrimpsies, snailsies, where are you? Come to Paula. Oh, tuk 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 tuk. Eee, tuk 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 tuk. Eat or be eaten. But who eats whom? Here you can assemble the food chain of the sea. At the beginning comes plankton. Which two sea dwellers live largely on plankton? No, no, that's not right at all. No, no. Shrimps. Correct. No, no, that's not right at all. No, no. No, no. You're right. The jellyfish is one of them. What represents the biggest danger to shrimps and jellyfish? Ah, uh, no, that's wrong. That's right. Young cod are the next link in the food chain. Ah, uh, no, that's wrong. Right, herrings eat shellfish and jellyfish. What likes to eat cod and herring, but must itself look out for even bigger sea animals? Wrong, I'm afraid. You're right that it's a fish eater, but it doesn't have to watch out for anything. Wrong. Wrong, I'm afraid. You're right that it's a fish eater, but it doesn't have to watch out for anything. R wrong, I'm afraid. Mmm, dogfish especially love herring. Now it really isn't difficult at all. Which two sea dwellers don't get eaten by the others? The porpoise, good. Porpoise eaters aren't present here. Exactly. The seal only has to be careful of big predatory fish. You did that very well. Plankton is eaten by shellfish and jellyfish, who are in turn eaten by small fish. Bigger fish eat the smaller fish and are then themselves food for mammals and predatory fish. That's the way it is. Boy, you're really fast, Kev. Oh, yes. You won't catch me in a hurry. I'm not only quick, I'm also slippery. There are slime glands in my skin that make it very difficult to get a hold on me. <laughs> <laughs> you just wait till I'm bigger. What then, Colin? Then I eat them. At the moment, Colin and I are too young. But when we're older, we're going to be the terror of the school. Ah! It's winter. The sea has even frozen along the shoreline. Winter doesn't affect me much. Fish are what are called poikilothermic animals. Poikilo what? Human beings always have the same body temperature regardless of whether it's warm out or cold. 
my body temperature automatically adjusts to the water temperature all by itself. Wow, look at all those fish. That's a shoal of herring. During the day, they hang around the seabed. At night, they come up close to the surface. They're not terribly bright, herring. There are fully grown cod down here, and herring is right at the top of their menu. Have you ever been up to the surface, Colin? Once, as a baby. That's enough for a lifetime. I took a deep breath and filled my swim bladder. What's that for? The air in my swim bladder allows me to hang in the water. Without it, I'd be too heavy and sink to the bottom. You're full of surprises. That's my school over there. School? Do you have to go every day, Kevin? What? No. No, no. I mean, I'm a fish that likes to swim with other fish of its kind in what's called a school. Lovely. Spring underwater. Fascinating. It's me, Joanna Jellyfish. I dance on the currents in the sea. They take me here, they take me there, they take me almost anywhere. We, Aurelia, live with others of our kind in colonies. <laughs> when we're all together, there's no holding us. But seriously, there's safety in numbers. We jellyfish have a lot of enemies. Jellyfish eat by a tube, as it were, at the end of which is our mouth. My fairly sizable stomach is situated in the middle of the bell. These ray-like channels lead to a ring at the edge of the bell and distribute the food over my whole body. Because of these round things, they call us Aurelia, which comes from the Latin word for ear. But it's not an ear at all. It's where my eggs grow. I use my tentacles to gather my food. My body is bell-shaped. On the end of each tentacle are small stinging cells. They contain poison and open up on the slightest contact. The poison pours out and burns the enemy's skin. Skin on the inside, skin on the outside, and in between, a supporting layer of jelly. This is how I get about. When I pull the bell together from the inside, the water is squeezed out underneath and I shoot forwards. Spring underwater. Fascinating. What pretty plants! 
Sea anemones are what are called anthrozones. Animals that look like flowers, like sea daisies and corals. What looks like a blossom are in fact tentacles. They used to catch food. Anthrozones and I are all members of the zoophyte family. This polyp too. Our bodies consist almost entirely of skin. Just think, I was once a polyp too. The jellyfish larvae spend a short time floating in the water and then settle on the seabed and develop into polyps. When we're bigger, we divide again. One polyp can create up to 30 young jellyfish. That's our kind of family life, also known as metagenesis. Don't hurt me. I'm not hurting you. Phew! Everything looks about the same. Do you always know where's up and where's down? Or do you sometimes swim the wrong way round? Oh no, I have an excellent sense of direction. Your sense of balance is in your ears, but mine's on little lumps on a stalk. They're on the edge of my bell. That's amazing! You haven't got a net with you. Have you? No, Joanna, why? Oh, I'm just petrified of nets, that's all. You can get caught up and trapped in them so quickly. Summer, lovely, Oscar. Our colony is large. We are bound to have a lot of offspring. How come? The larger the colony, the greater the chance that the sperm cells of the male jellyfish meet up with the eggs of the female jellyfish. Only then can a new jellyfish be created. Have you been up to the beach yet? For Pete's sake! The beach is fatal for me. My body consists almost completely of water. On land, I'll dry out and die. Oops! Sorry about that. Are you alright? Yes, yes. I'm well protected. Well, good for you. Because when my stinging cells burst on contact, it can burn the skin quite nastily. Well, hello. Well, oh God, where? No, no, I was just saying hi. Well, hello. Well, oh God, where? No, no, I was just saying hi. see much of the autumn down here. Help! A spiny dogfish! Phew! I'm scared stiff. 
stiff of spiny dogfish. They want to eat me. I also have to look out for seals and mackerels. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> What's that, Joanna? A sponge. How practical. For washing with? No, no. I don't need to wash. I'm sort of permanently in the bath as it is. No. The sponge is a sea creature, just like me. It's raining. But you're okay under your bell. And this thing's got a dome. Oscar, what are you eating? A sandwich. Would you like a bite? I eat only plankton. Larvae tiny sea creatures and bits of plants. They're easy to digest and very healthy. Ugh. Oscar, that's a polyp. It's a member of the zoophyte family, just like me. I'm lost! Where's my shoulder? <laughs> I've never spent the winter underwater. so pretty, Joanna. You must be very popular. <sighs> Are you joking? We jellyfish have a lousy reputation. People sometimes call us Medusa, and she wasn't a very nice person at all. I don't get it. Why? I think it may have something to do with our sting. It's not dangerous, but it is very unpleasant to make our acquaintance. My gallery of ancestors is quite impressive. There were jellyfish long before there were fish. People have discovered fossils of jellyfish 670 million years old. Wow, even older than the dinosaurs. What a strong current. It's just carrying me away. Moving forward is no problem. It's changing direction that's difficult. I have no steering. In the seas around Australia, there are jellyfish called sea wasps that are dangerous. Their poison can kill a human in a few minutes. Gosh! They're no bigger than I am, but their tentacles can grow up to three meters long. Which way to the north, please? Straight on and turn left at the sea bank. That was a compass jellyfish, a close relative of mine.
wants it to go. I know the feeling. Happens to me all the time. It's the currents in the water. I have lots and lots of relations. This jellyfish has tentacles up to 50 meters long that contain a dangerous poison. It's known as the Portuguese man of war and it's really a colony of hundreds of polyps under a floating bell. The Australian sea wasp is highly poisonous and kills a human in a few seconds. The limnome medusa is no bigger than this picture, but it shines like a bright star in the depths of the ocean. The compass jellyfish resembles me a lot, except that it stings like bilio if you touch it. Those are muscles, eh? Impressed. Fantastic momentum, Olympian. Never spent the winter underwater. Never spent the winter underwater. <laughs> the seaside is really cold in winter. school, but we haven't got a teacher. We have spines, but we're not hedgehogs. It's us, Donald and Deirdre Dogfish. My brother and I are spiny dogfish. We may be small, but don't underestimate us. That's our school. A group of fish is called a school, even if we don't have any teachers. Being all alone is boring, and as we are fairly small, we stick together. It makes us feel safer from our enemies, like seals. We dogfish are what are called cartilaginous fish. Our skeleton isn't rigid, it's flexible which makes us extremely maneuverable. We can, of course, hold ourselves straight too, if we want to. Our backbone is very special. It goes from our head to our tail fin. It's pretty dark where we live. We have 
a layer of tissue in our eyes that reflects what little light there is very strongly. Which means we can see in the dark. That's us, just after we were born. Baby dogfish grow in eggs in their mother's womb. Most fish lay their eggs in the sea and then leave them to fend for themselves. Dogfish carry their eggs for the full period and then give birth to live young. Later on, I'd like to have some little ones too. When I'm about 20, when I'm finally mature. We get our name, Spiny Dogfish, from the spines along our dorsal fin, the one on our back. They're small, sharp and poisonous. Those who annoy us get spiked, and that's very painful. And in spring, when the world above the waterline is so beautiful. <coughs> Serena! Oh, it's you, Oscar. I'm just looking for food, so you'll have to excuse me. I'll see you later. <coughs> I'm a bit scared of seals. Once in a while, they're partial to a bit of dogfish. It's great how you just hang in the water like that. <laughs> I'm held up by liquid fat, dear boy. <laughs> Our livers contain masses of oil, so we don't need a swim bladder like other fish. Plus, we are carried by our pectoral fins, like a plane is carried by its wings. Muscles? Lots of wrapping for a very little content. What do you like to eat? Jellyfish, shrimps, smaller fish. We're big fans of schools of fish. The bigger the school, the more fish we can grab. Cool. You've got the same steering system as we have. No, no. That's my hazard warning triangle so that people see me and get out of the way. Our fin scares the life out of some people. But in fact, we use it to steer with. Exactly, and it helps us keep our balance. moon has begun. We spiny dogfish now migrate to the coast. Oh, so there'll be little ones along soon. Soon? Well, it depends on your point of view. It can take up to two years. Brilliant divers. What 
it's a beautiful summer evening. Oops, what was that? Wave, Oscar. Can you hear the ship's engine? No. Oscar can't hear sounds that low. He doesn't have our fine sense of hearing, Donald. The oxygen contents, okay? Why don't you need oxygen? No. Wait a second. Of course we need oxygen. We get it from the water. We just leave our mouths open all the time. Then the water flows through our gills by itself. And that's where we take out the oxygen we need. Deirdre is a fantastic swimmer. Just look at her whack her tail fin. That's very impressive. Oh, isn't that a coal of herring? Ah, <sighs> too late. teeth in our skin. Depending on which direction you stroke it, our skin can be as smooth as silk or as rough as sandpaper. of some pretty gruesome things about the other members of your family. Mm, that they eat people and stuff. Yes, like that great white shark, for instance. They do attack people from time to time. But you won't find sharks like that in our waters. It's us dogfish who are scared of people because they eat us. In the form of what they call smoked belly of dogfish, or flake. Ew, I had no idea. Small spiny dogfish grow in eggs inside their mothers. During this time, they feed through a yolk sac, which they lose at birth. Each spiny dogfish mother gives birth to ten young a year, each as big as your palm. Fascinating. of you to come out here to visit us, Oscar. In autumn, we prefer to live further out to sea where it's deeper. We only go this close to the surface at night. We usually live near the seabed. Is it the stars? No, 
Not exactly. Let's just say we're following our food. Great white, only smaller. Tusks. Aren't they? And look at the shape of my head. How it changes when I open my mouth. Mmm. <laughs> Something somewhere smells of tasty little fishes. <laughs> I can't smell anything. No. Human noses are no match for our sense of smell. It's top notch. We sense very quickly when something approaches. The shark family has more than five senses. Shark eyes have their own little light source. Like in a cat's eye, a layer of cells amplify the light in the eye, which allows us to see excellently in dark water. Sound travels through water five times faster and further than through air, so our ears can also pick up distant sounds. When we swim, water flows through our noses. Let's say you released one drop of fish extract in a billion drops of water, we'd still smell it. The lateral line consists of canals with sensitive dimples. That's what we feel the changes in water pressure with. The pressure changes with currents or obstacles, for instance. Our electroreceptors send out an impulse that bounces back when it hits an obstacle. A great aid to orientation. Mmm, taste is a wonderful sense. That's taken care of by all the taste buds on my lips or in my mouth. Imagine, Oscar. There were spiny dogfish around 400 million years ago. Amazing! How do you know? They found 400 million year old fossils that prove it. Gosh, it's dark down here. Well, it's winter. <laughs> I'm hungry and not a bite in sight. Sharks ensure a balanced sea population. If we were to disappear, some kinds of fish would multiply so fast there wouldn't be enough food for them all. I never thought of it like that. <laughs> the sea urchin is a spiky sort of cove. Bit fishy if you ask me. You're insulting my smelling pits, Oscar. Smelling pits? I've heard of smelling salts, but... No. Nothing to do with them, I'm afraid. I have smelling pits in my face. What you would probably call a nose. Except that they're on the inside. Donald, 
There's water coming out of your head. For God's sake, man, do something. Sure. That's where my gill slits are. My gills filter oxygen out of the water, so they always have to have water flowing through them. You must have to clean your teeth a lot. Nonsense. We of the shark family discard teeth when they don't work anymore. We're always growing new ones. Look. We have several rows of teeth behind each other. When the front ones fall out, the back ones move forward. And new ones grow at the back. And sharks don't need a brace either. Our jaws grow with us and always fit perfectly. Wow! That would be so cool! May I introduce? There are around 380 different types of shark. Here are six of them. The monkfish looks more like a ray, but it is fact a shark. They snake along the seabed, beating their tail fins. The prize for the best shaped head goes to the hammerhead. It can feel even the tiniest electrical impulses and can even find its food when it's hidden in the sand. The white is one of the big ones. Its color is great camouflage. From above, it blends in with the dark color of the sea, and from below, it looks like sunlit water. Mako sharks are the greyhounds of the shark family. The smallest of our relatives is one of the cat sharks, which only reaches a length of about 15 centimeters. May I introduce? Ah, a guest! And it's spring when the world above the waterline is so beautiful. Gentle breeze, plants are sprouting in the dunes. Spring by the sea is lovely. Hooray! We can swim. We can fly. And we can scream. Yes, aha! It's us, Sybil and Sydney Seagull. We're herring gulls, and we live on the beach. We, we live in a great big gull colony. And get about a lot. We love to pop into the town, for instance. Oh, yeah, there's some great restaurants with extremely interesting dustbins. We like to ride the waves of the ocean. But we don't need water wings. Because we've got webbed skin between our toes. Very practical. I always lay exactly three eggs. And if one gets broken, I just lay another. We take it in turns to hatch the chicks. We sit on the eggs for four weeks. Or get food for the little ones, always in turns. At six weeks, the chicks are ready to fly. After that, they don't need our help much anymore. Ships are a great invention, especially those that catch fish. First they catch the fish, then the fishermen throw them overboard again. <laughs> It does all seem a bit pointless, but it's great for us. Oh, 
just have a bit of a rest here. Okay. The chicks will be hatching soon. How do they do that? They use their beaks to crack away at the eggshell from the inside and then crawl out. Hard work for a tiny chick. My goodness, they're loud. What? You don't like it? Our screaming is music to the ear of a seaman. Wants to know if the kids are hungry. The answer is always yeah, yeah, yeah. All we have to do now is aim and hit the red spot properly. Bullseye, here we go. Sybil now brings up the food. Yeah. And the chicks eat that stuff. Me? They love it! Where have you been? Finding food, feeding chicks, having a bite myself, and so on. And there I am, gone again! Again. They're hungry, starving, famished, waiting to be fed. Young seagulls are dependent on their parents. Over there on the beach, there's always so much commotion in the summer. Lots and lots of holidaymakers. Here, thank goodness, it's nice and quiet. Really is going fishing. How? I can't see a rod or a net. Seagulls don't need all that stuff. What we espy from the air, we just dive down onto and grab. And then it's fun up a deep. Today. Anything we can lay our beaks on. Mussels, snails, worms, crabs, smaller fish. From time to time, a dead mouse, stale bread, leftover food. <sighs> If you like, you can print it out and make it into a real mobile. To print out a part of the mobile, click on it. Then the template will appear here. Now you just have to click on print. But don't forget to switch on the printer first. Now you can print out the mobile piece by piece. When you've printed all the parts, you only have to print the instructions. Here's a... Over there on the beach, there's always so much commotion in the summer. Lots and lots of holidaymakers. Here, thank goodness, it's nice and quiet.
Even an overcast day at the seaside is really nice. This is what the mud flats look like from our point of view. Great, huh? <laughs> Channels are home to thousands of tiny creatures. If you want to know where the lugworms are hiding, just look for holes in the sand. These channels are home to th these. Ch the sea washes the lighter parts of the sand away. That's what creates these narrow channels, known as tideways. It can be very dangerous to go into the mudflats alone. If you don't know what you're doing, the rising tide can catch you out. The tide comes in faster than you can get back to the beach. When sheep graze on a dike, the grass grows back thick and strong. That holds the earth together well and makes the dike more secure. Do you know that one? That's a herring gull just like me. But it looks quite different. Until they're four years old, young seagulls have their own color scheme. <laughs> ah, Mrs. Shrill is surveying the coast again. The coast again? What on earth is that? Aha! That's a good one, Oscar. No, the countryside at the seaside is called the coast. What does that sign say, Sybil? Please keep off the dunes. Please stay on the signed paths. Why is it forbidden to go into the dunes? So that people don't disturb the birds and destroy the plant life. Look, that's Sydney, isn't it? You seagulls all look alike. I can't tell you apart at all. Of course that's Sydney. Seagulls can tell their partners at a glance. There's someone up in the tower. Would you like a look? But my eyesight is excellent. I can see the lighthouse keeper clearly. Really? Without a telescope? That's brilliant. Whoops. Mind the surf, Oscar. A smurf here? When a wave approaches the shore and then breaks on the beach, that's called surf. What's that armchair doing down there? That's a beach chair. In the summer, there are thousands of them on the beach. Some holidaymakers like to relax in them. What the mud? It's pretty chilly here in winter. Ooh. Cold feet? No, we can't get cold feet. We haven't got any nerve to feel warm or cold in our legs. Well, aren't you the lucky ones? Look, that's one of our children up there, Oscar. My, that's 
a big one. What's the lifespan of a seagull? More than 40 years. Whoa! Someone's found something to eat. Uh oh, this could be trouble. Two skulls find a tasty morsel, they both want it, and then there's a fight. Especially in winter, when food is scarce. And the winner is Mrs. Shrill. Who am I? My home is the sea, but I'm no fish. <sighs> it's me, Serena. I'm a seal and belong to the family of Pinopadia. I'm a bit clumsy on land, but in the water I'm fast and agile. I love to bask on sandbanks, relaxing in the warm sun. Unfortunately, I often get disturbed by holidaymakers and then have to make my escape. I've got very sharp, strong teeth. I need them to be able to catch my food. My feet take the form of flippers. To swim, I use the front ones to steer with, and I beat my hind flippers together, which gives me the necessary push. My favorite food is fish and shellfish. I love crabs, for instance. They're healthy, and they taste scrumptious. That's my son, little Seymour. I gave birth to him in the summer on the sandbank. Seymour could swim and dive from the day he was born. It's a good job, too, because when the tide comes in, the sandbank disappears. I have one baby each year. I look after it for a month, then it can look after itself. First warm rays of sunshine. That feels good. I love the spring. Oh, people are always wanting to come and watch us. It's awful. They come far too close. Help! Now they're shooting at us! Don't worry. They're only taking photographs. It's harmless. And how am I supposed to know that? If you were here, I'd have dived long ago. The thing is, I need my sandbank breaks. Okay then. I'm going to tell everyone I meet that they should leave you and your friends in peace. Your friend isn't exactly an elegant mover. Hmm. On land, we only use our front flippers to get about and just drag the back ones behind us. I must say it doesn't look very impressive. But just wait till you see us in the water. Wow! 
What kind of an island is that? That's a sandbank. When the tide comes in, it'll disappear under the waves. Sandbanks are vital for us. That's where we relax. Do you sleep here too? Oh no, I sleep in the water. It's safer. Only my nose pokes out of the water so I can breathe. Serena, there's something missing from your head. Don't you have any ears? Silly, of course I've got ears. They just look different on me. Animals that live in water don't have what's called a concha, the shell-like ear structure you have. It wouldn't be practical. My ears are set into my coat. The sea is so calm. That's right. There's no wind at the moment. Lord, a scrap of food on board. Pity. Hello, Serena. How are things? Shh. Seymour's asleep. Where did he come from? I gave birth to Seymour here on this very sandbank. We seals have our babies now, in summer. Wow! Can I stroke him? No! Never touch a baby seal, Oscar. Please, never! If the baby smells of human, the mother will abandon it in front. But why? I only want to stroke it. You? Yes. But there are other people who hunt our babies for their fur. We seals are suspicious of humans, Oscar. We are scared of them. Look, now the pup's all on its own. That's because they sleep a lot when they're so young, which gives me a chance to grab a bite to eat. So, in the meantime, we go fishing for food. It's a good job it didn't wake up. That was very well done. What was well done? My pups practicing catching fish, which isn't at all easy. Come on, have another go. What's happened? Oh, it's nothing. The little one's just calling its mother. Seal pups always wail like that. They're sometimes called whalers. See, there's its mother. We never leave our young alone for long. Sometimes when there's a storm or a gale, pups and their mothers get separated. Then keepers from the seal station rescue the little whalers as they're known. The babies are weighed and measured and examined by a vet. Whalers can't handle cow's milk. They need mushed porridge oats and minced herring. Seal pups won't take food from humans at first. That's why they're fed by means of a funnel. All important information about a particular pup is then put on a board. How often and how much they should be fed and what medicine they need.
The pups first have to recover from their ordeal. They sleep best under a heat lamp. Do you know what's really bad? When people disturb us when we're sunbathing. Then we have to rush into the water and often damage our stomach fur. It's especially bad for the little ones. Ah, what beautiful sunshine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Seymour can only drink his milk here on the sandbank. Where do you get the milk from? Seymour is still drinking my milk. It's got loads of fat in it. Well then, Seymour must be full now. What a beautiful sunny autumn day. You don't find a great big sand pit like this every day. Mmm, freshly baked sand cake. Mmm, yummy. Boy, oh boy, look at all that stuff floating around out here. Even sandbanks get polluted with rubbish. Oh. That'll dissolve in the water in time. No, Oscar. Everything that gets thrown into the sea either floats around or sinks to the bottom. I've often cut myself on broken glass, for instance. Oh, no. I'll never throw anything into the sea again. I promise. <sighs> Did you sleep well? No. Your mum's over there. I know, but I can get on fine without her. Seal pups only stay with their mothers for four or five weeks. <sighs> on your marks. Get set. Go! You can really die. Or shallow, I just adore diving. Hello, Oscar. How nice that you found me. Why are you so far out to sea, Serena? Out here, the sea is warmer than the air. There's more to eat and lots of space. Those are friends from my herd. We live together in a group. Here are some of my close relatives. Walruses live near the North Pole. With their sensitive beards, they vacuum up the seabed and pick up shellfish. The long, sharp fangs of the males are a sign of strength. Sea elephants are the biggest seals on Earth. Some males have between 40 and 100 mates, and others none. The male's trunk is a great megaphone, and is also used when fighting over the girls. Sea lions are superb acrobats. Some even appear in circuses. They're also good at water sports 
At 40 kilometers per hour, they're the fastest of the seal family. That's almost as fast as cars are allowed to go in town. Yippee! And a minute turning circle. How do you do that? I've got a really elastic backbone. I'm the original underwater whiz. Brr. It's very cold. Aren't you freezing? No, I've put on a really thick warm layer of fat which is really good protection against the cold and illnesses. I'm just going to dive down for a quick snack, Oscar. How can you make anything out down there in all that murky water? I can see much better down there than I can up here. My eyes were made for seeing underwater. Plus, I have really good ears. I usually hear something before I see it. My lunch has just escaped. Those are friends from my herd. We live together in a group. Here are some of my close relatives. I? I cavort in the sea, but I am neither fish nor shellfish. Yoo-hoo! It's me, Percy the Porpoise, also known as the Sea Hog. Dolphins are friendly and sociable. Porpoises like me prefer to live alone. Whales, dolphins, and porpoises are all part of the same family. We're all cetaceans. My tail fin is my steering wheel. It's also called a fluke. I'm a brilliant swimmer and diver. I don't have hind legs. I don't need them. My front fins are in the form of flippers. We porpoises are mammals. Our young are called calves. They drink milk, just like farm calves. I'm not a fish. I have a lung, just like you. Before I dive, I have to take a very deep breath. After diving, I have to out again. Well, hello, Oscar. Hello, Percy. Have you got a cold? Oh, no. After diving, I blow the used air out again. When the big whales in my family do it, you can see and hear it for miles. There she blows, as they say. I don't like ships. Why not? Why not? Most of them catch fish. 
So many fish that there are hardly any left for us. And we could easily snag ourselves in their nets and drown. Drown? You're joking, aren't you? How can something that lives in the water drown? We are not fish. We breathe like you do. We have to come to the surface for air. Seawater is so terribly salty. Do you know why that is, Percy? Salt is a mineral and occurs in various types of stone. Water, in the form of rain or groundwater, washes it out of the stone. Together with the water, the salt then flows into the streams and rivers. The rivers thus transport more salt from their surroundings on their way to the sea. The sea has a huge surface area exposed to the sun. Water constantly evaporates from the sea, but the salt is left behind in the sea. But if the rivers bring the salt to the sea, why aren't they salty? They are, Oscar, but only very slightly. In the sea, on the other hand, the salt has been collecting for a long, long time. That's why it's saltier. Aha! Mmm, <laughs> the water's lovely today. Hey, Percy, your tail fin is really wide. My fluke is a great means of propulsion. Very flexible and powerful. To swim, I move it up and down. What's that? That's seaweed, not my thing at all. I prefer fish, mackerel and herring in particular. What's that on your back? My fin. What sort of fin? No, it's called a fin. Look at the water glistening in the summer sun. Treasure hunt. Try and find the treasure on the old pirate's island. But first, you must hide some treasure yourself and try and make sure it can't be found. Click on a piece of treasure and drag and drop it where you'd like to bury it. To turn the treasure around, just click on it. Treasure must be distributed so that no two pieces are touching. Uh. When you've positioned all your treasure, Click on the shovel to bury them. Now try and find the pirate treasure. Where could it be hidden? Just click on the pirate island. Shame, nothing here. Now it's the pirate's turn. He'll be searching your island, of course. Phew, the pirate was out of luck. If you find a piece of treasure, you can go on digging. You've got to find all the pirate's treasure before he finds all yours. Good luck.
Look at the water glistening in the summer sun. Your eyes are awfully far apart. Yes, that's very practical. I can see pretty well behind me, to the left and right, which gives me a good overview. Percy, you've got a hole in your head. Yes, and it's where it should be. That's my blowhole. A sort of nostril, if you like. Funny sort of nose. Can you smell with it? No, not at all. I need my blowhole to breathe through. Percy, you've got a visitor. Percy, the baby will be here soon. May I present Peggy, Oscar? Peggy's going to have our baby shortly. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Found you at last. In autumn, I'm always out here in deeper water. Get air down there. I don't. I hold my breath. Fish filter oxygen out of the water with their gills. I've got a lung just like you. Above the surface, I take deep breaths, but only to a minute. Hold my breath. I can dive for up to six minutes. That calf can swim really well. Did you teach it, Percy? No, that was Peggy. We bulls, as we males are called, don't get involved with bringing up the young. Where's Peggy's calf got to? It's probably hungry and gone to its mum for a drink of milk. What's that on your head? A rain hat? I don't like getting wet. You don't? How strange. <laughs> Sounds like a thunderstorm. What do you do when it starts thundering and lightning? Dive, of course. What else? How do you hear if you haven't got any ears? Oh, I've got ears all right. You just can't see them. They're in little holes under the skin. I've got excellent hearing, not just over, but also under the water. Practical. Use the balloon to choose the... It's winter, Percy. There's snow all over the coast. Do you actually sleep? I never sleep. Well, maybe the odd nap or two when I'm swimming along, but I don't need more than that. That's great! <laughs> yes, 
some whales love to sing. Really? Oh, yes. People have recorded whale songs and conversations. You can even buy CDs of us. Cool. That's a fair number of teeth you've got there, Percy. There are two kinds of whale, Oscar. One has no teeth, the other does. I'm one of the tooth whales. We like to eat other animals. According to size, anything from a crab to a penguin. The orca, or killer whale, is a large, aggressive specimen that belongs to the dolphins. The blue whale is a toothless whale. It only eats tiny creatures. These flexible plates in the mouth of a whale are called baleens. These are used to filter plankton out of the water. Tooth whales have only one blowhole, while toothless whales have two. That way we can tell them apart. Toothless whales are elegant divers. Great. Peggy's calf is still being weaned, but it started to eat fish. Young members of the whale family learn to catch fish from the age of four months. But they still need their mother's milk for another four months. So Peggy has to suckle her little one for eight months. It's really cold in winter. Back again. I hope that's not animals attacking my sandcastle. And if it is... This is my... Uh, Baltasar. What you said about the girls isn't quite right. I've met some very nice herring gulls, Sydney and Sybil. Gulls are birds. They all nest together in a big colony. Seagulls don't have teeth, they have beaks. Oh. Right, Balthazar. The dogfish is actually a bit different. Spiny dogfish are not very big, but their teeth are very sharp. They're predatory fish, just like their bigger cousins, the sharks, in other regions. The spiny dogfish isn't a danger to humans. In fact, it's afraid of them. Are you sure? I think I'd rather not get to know a spiny dogfish. A shrimp. Looks sweet, but is very large. Shrimps have their babies on sandbanks. The little ones drink their mother's milk and wail loudly if they're left alone. Right, I'll try and find a shrimp. I wonder if that was all correct. You'll be amazed what I found out, Balthazar. Cod, place, and coli are fish. They live at the bottom of the sea. To breathe, they need water around them. They take oxygen out of the water by means of their gills. Fish have a dangerous life because they're a popular source of food. Oh, who would have thought it? Are. Seals are totally different. They're mammals for a start. They have their babies on sandbanks and the little ones can swim and dive very soon after being born. Well, I never. How talented. Balthazar, 
I think your definition of jellyfish needs adjusting. While I was underwater, I met Joanna, an Aurelia jellyfish. An amazing sight, almost transparent. She has stinging cells on her body filled with poison, which she uses to catch food or defend herself with. She's not dangerous for humans. Well, I don't know, you know. I'd prefer not to find out. Baltasar, I ran into this really nice porpoise. Just think, it's a mammal, even though it lives in water. Porpoises give birth underwater, and their babies even drink their mother's milk underwater. The porpoise certainly gets top marks for originality. Well, I hope you enjoyed discovering the ocean with me and Oscar the Balloonist. We learned about so many wonderful creatures. I hope you enjoyed. Please give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Which creature was your favorite to learn about? And of course, subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. Don't forget the playlist in the description box to see other games by Tavola. Remember, you are special and loved. You are never alone and you're always welcome to come back and hang out anytime. Until the next video, God bless. I will see you all later. Bye-bye, my friends. Do you want to leave the game? Yes? No? See you later. Bye!